This is the voice of victory because Jesus is our victory. Hallelujah. This is Pastor Henry Madava and I am coming to you with this wonderful, joyous and joyful gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. The good news is Jesus conquered death. He died but rose from the dead. And the victory has been given to us. And we can rejoice in this victory. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And, and that's one of the reasons why I got saved. Because I did not believe in Jesus. I thought Jesus was a Jew. I'm an African. There's nothing in common. I mean, I thought Christianity was one of the tactics that people who colonize other countries use. I used to argue that, you see, the missionaries told us to close our eyes, lift our hands, and while our eyes were closed, our nation was taken. So that's when I used, I used to think Christianity is one of the Western ways of conquering other nations until I realized that Jesus is not a religion. Jesus died for my sins and for your sins. Jesus rose from the dead and he is alive and he's the Lord of heaven. He's not a, the way that other nations take over other nations. He's the way to the Father. He's the way to heaven and in him is life everlasting. Hallelujah. Now, I want to say to you that even though Jesus is alive, some people still do not know about Jesus. They never heard. They've never heard the gospel. They've never seen his power. They never heard about his love. They've never realized that in Jesus there is solution to every problem, every need you may ever have in this world. Jesus is the solution. And it pains my heart. I think it pains the Lord's heart even more that so many people have never heard about Jesus. And that's why the Lord called me, not only to be a pastor here in Ukraine, but to take the gospel through Christ for all cities, to all nations of the world, especially we are measuring this year and this coming year in Asia. And we want to go beyond that. Right now we are working in Thailand, in India, and we are just starting Nepal. And I, I can't wait to get into Nepal, the Himalaya nation. So many good, big, well-known mountains. But the gospel needs to get into Nepal. You see, Jesus is Lord and he loves all people. And one thing I've come to realize is nobody ever does the work of the Lord alone. We need one another. We need other people. You see, the Lord has anointed me to preach the gospel, to get people healed, but he always makes sure we work together as a team, partnering together. That's why I need you as partners. And I want to say thank you to all the, ones, the people who are watching who are already partners of Christ for all cities. If you are not a partner yet, please consider doing so. What does it mean to be a partner? It means you pray for Pastor Henry and his ministry as we reach the nations. Number two, your financial support. And by the way, it's not only for preaching the gospel to nations. It's for reaching orphans, uh, reaching drug addicts, former convicts, helping um, single mothers and the children of the martyrs whose fathers died for the gospel, and they need help. Some of them are not even going to school, no food to eat, no clothes to put on, because they have no money. And so somebody has to take care and take charge, and the Lord has commissioned me to do that. And may God bless you as you consider becoming our partner. Now, I have a very short message for you today, because you see the Word of God is powerful. There is power in the Word of God. That's why I love reading the Bible. 
And you see, when you hear the word of God, never listen to the Bible as just another book. Always listen, acknowledging this is the word of God. This is God speaking to me. The same God who spoke to Abraham, to Isaac and Jacob, or to Moses, or to our, to our Lord Jesus, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, He's the same God speaking to you through the Bible. So you need to receive it with all your heart, and that's when the Word of God will work for you. Now let me read this to you. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. But God demonstrates his love, his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. I want to speak to you today on the subject, none is unlovable. None is unlovable. God loves all people. Just like I read. In fact, he did not just love, he demonstrated the love. How did he do it? Christ died for the ungodly, for sinners. When we did not know God, he died for us. That's an investment. You see, when you're in business, you put your money into something expecting to get profit after some time. But... You may not get it, but Jesus died. He invested his own life, dying for sinners. What is a sinner? Somebody who is fighting against God, going the other way. When God is going to the right, the sinner is going to the left. And then Jesus died for people like that. And when he says Jesus died for the ungodly, for sinners. Who are the sinners? Well, the sinners are the murderers, the killers, the adulterers, the liars, the, you know, the robbers, the people who are doing all kinds of evil all over the world, bombing other people, killing other people. They are the sinners. The people who are leaving their own children, the people who are doing abortion, those are the sinners. And Christ died for them. And what was that? It says, in this, he was demonstrating that God was demonstrating his own love towards the sinners. So that's the issue. Are you a sinner? Do you think you are unlovable? Do you think you are beyond the touch of God's love? Then look what happened. Christ died for you. In other words, there is not a single person in this world who is unlovable. Because God has already demonstrated his love towards you while you were the bad boy. When you were the bad guy, he died for you. You were the lying guy, he died for you. You were running around, he died for you. And that was demonstrating his love. So the enemy wants to convince you, you are unlovable. You've done too much. You've been in the wrong for too long. But I want you to know, there's not a single person in this world who is unlovable. And God demonstrated by giving Jesus that he dies when we were yet sinners. You know, I live in Ukraine. Ukraine used to be a very communistic country when it was part of the Soviet Union. You know what people were taught in school? There is no God. God is, a, is an, a human idea, a myth. Now, God is not a myth. God is a reality, a person, a loving person, powerful. He's the creator. Now, if God is not a myth, but he's a person, so I, I used to think, God, did you send Jesus to die for these communists who are shouting that there is no God? Can you imagine that? 
they were teaching 260 million people that there is no God. But he still loved them and demonstrated his love by dying for them. I always think if God could forgive and love them, he can love you. And you are special in the eyes of God. You are created in the image of God. And that's what the devil doesn't want you to know. Don't doubt the love of God. When you doubt his love, you begin to doubt his word. You begin to doubt your own prayers. You begin to doubt your own life. You begin to doubt the meaning of life. And doubt in your life will bring the enemy to be the king of your life. How do we remove the doubt? How do we remove the fear? By receiving the love of God. God loves you. And what I like about it is that he does not just love me, but the Bible says he shares his love. Let me read to you chapter 5, verse 5. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. You see, Jesus demonstrated God's love by dying for us on the cross when we were not worthy. And then Jesus, by the Holy Spirit, did it step further. God poured his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Love is the basis of walking with God. I love God because I know he loves me. Love is the basis of your faith. If God loves me, I can trust him. Love is the basis of your ministry. Because if I'm loved, I will not look for love in all the wrong places. Love is the basis for everything you do. It safeguards your heart. It gives you that anchor. You know, that quality of being anchored to something stronger than you. And it gives you the ability to stand strong. I want you to see some of the people who experienced the love of God in their lives when they received a miracle from God. Watch this, and I'll be back. This young lady came to the service tonight with this cloth on her eye because foreign object got in her eye and it was totally swelled and he, she couldn't see far away. But when she got here, the swelling went away and now she, she put away her cloth and oh. she can see. Wow. Uh, your, your eye was swollen. And you couldn't see well. And what happened? And what were you using this for? Yeah, close. Oh, you were using to close. Yeah. And what happened to you? Now this is a miracle. Because she was swollen up. And Jesus with compassion. And touched her eye. And the swollen, swelling has gone back. This is the love of God. That's what Jesus does. God bless you. In the name of Jesus. God Amen. bless you. Praise the Lord. Let's say hallelujah. hallelujah. Two years ago, this man was working, uh, moving the rice bags. And one of the bags, when he lifted, it tore and damaged his uh, ligaments and muscle on the left hand. Uh -huh. And he couldn't raise it. And tonight, he can raise it. God healed him. And he just, like wow. a normal man, even better. That means... You a back tore the ligaments here. ครับทางด้านซ้ายทางด้านซ้ายนี่คือแบกกระสอบข้าวสารเนาะครับมันหนักมันหนักแล้วก็มันมันตกลงมานะครับมันก็ทําให้ขัดคล้องมากครับยก
God has created new ligaments. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Tear came out from her eyes all the time. She had what? Uh, tears. tears. Tears came out from her eyes all the time and okay. she had to wipe it out. Okay. Uh, but tonight it stopped. ฮอกปีนะครับหกหกปีที่น้ําตาไหลตลอดเลยนะครับจ้าจ้าเป็นน้ําตาไหลตลอดเลยนะครับมองดูทางนู้นนะครับมองดูทางนู้นเขาโอ
that the love of God may fill you and the healing power, delivering power may touch you. Lay your hands wherever you are sick in your body. If you just need the touch of God, the love of God to fill you, then lay your hands on your heart. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, touch your people. Fill them with your love. Let the love of God fill their hearts. And in the name of Jesus, I command sickness and disease to leave. Pain be removed. I speak healing and deliverance in the name of Jesus. Cancer, die. Hepatitis, be removed. I command the AIDS virus to die. And I say to sickness and disease, leave, let lungs be cleansed. And Father, I thank you for the healing of the joints and every growth disappear. Thank you, Father, for your miracle working power. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Well, God bless you. What a wonderful thing to, be, to have the opportunity to speak to you. You are special in the eyes of God. Every one of you is so special to God and to me. Thank you for watching. Please feel free to write us and call us anytime you feel. We'll pray for you. We'll help you. We cannot do everything, but we sure promise we're going to pray for you. And I sure promise you, you'll get a letter from us. And I pray the Lord God will multiply you and prosper you in every way. In Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord is so wonderful. Many years ago, I had a very powerful dream. I saw myself in a dream going to school being a little boy. And the reason was when I was young, we used to run to school in the village of Africa. We didn't have any watches. So we would look at a tree and see if the sun was like below the leaves of the tree, then we were on time. If the sun was higher than the leaves, we were late. In my dream, I saw the sun being so high, well after 11, 29. Somehow in a dream you know everything. And I said, wow, I'm so late. And then I looked again because I wasn't sure why the sun was so high up. And then in, when I looked for the second time, the sun had disappeared. And in its place were these big words, I am coming soon. I woke up from my sleep and I knew Jesus was trying to convey to me the message, He's coming soon and the church is getting late. And when I got that message, that's when I began to preach the gospel all over the world, doing conferences, crusades, healing crusades, evangelistic festivals, because Jesus is coming soon and the work is not done. And when I saw what I was doing, how minute and small it was, I prayed to the Lord, how can I do it faster? And he gave me a vision of starting evangelistic teams all over the world with a mandate of putting up at least 3,000 evangelistic teams, each team consisting of three people, PA system, and a car. And their job is to preach the gospel every day and bring 10 people to Christ. It's like having a big, gigantic crusade every day. And the Lord has put on my heart helping orphans, especially orphans. These are children whose fathers were preachers of the gospel and they were martyred for Jesus. So what does it mean to be a partner? The Bible says the Apostle Paul was talking about Titus. And he said in 2 Corinthians 8.23, Whether any do inquire of Titus, he is my partner and fellow helper concerning you. That's what a partner does. 
He is a fellow helper. We stand together for a specific group of people for a specific task. The Lord has called me and sent me to the nations. He has anointed me for His work. I don't take it for granted. I thank Him for it. But I cannot make it alone. I need you, just like Paul needed Titus, to stand with me as a partner and as a fellow helper. You may choose to be a partner for Muslim countries, for Buddhist countries, for children of the martyrs, for evangelistic teams, and whatever ideas you may have for that, that will be very helpful. But I'm calling on you to be a partner with me as I fulfill this mission that God has given me. And remember, there's a reward for your faithfulness. Let's stand together and let's do the work of God. God bless you.